Shalom, shalom. I want to start off by saying Barakah Fi Hawa. Barakah Fi Hawa Shai. Barakah Fi Hawa Ba Hashem Yahu Shai Ba Hashem Rakah Kodash. Double honor said Elder Sinabazo, Great Millstone. And enough respect to the brothers that are out there pushing and spreading the truth. The gospel of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahu Shai to the focus of the world. Um, you know, I just wanted to make a quick video, bring this out. Um, and then, I guess, highlight the point that, you know, even these scholars, okay, these Edomites, they know, okay, of the prophecies of the scriptures, they know that Babylon, the destruction of Babylon, hasn't already happened and done away with, and that is happening, it's going to happen in our time, you know, um, so it begins, you know, with, um, as I just with um, Jeremiah chapter 50, um, and it, it highlights verse 11, you know, verse to 16, and this is the point that I wanted to bring out. Um, it says, her foundations have fallen. This is a quote from the, from the scriptures. It says, her foundations have fallen. Her walls are thrown down. These phrases and similar phrases in Jeremiah 50 to 51 are an interesting challenge in understanding prophetic fulfillment. Right? Because what people refuse to understand is that this is a twofold prophecy. You know? Um, that's why it's a challenge, but you know, it really isn't a challenge to those whom the Mosai is gifted with the spirit of understanding. So continuing says, not very long after Jeremiah's prophecy, Babylon was conquered, but was not destroyed. You understand? The foundations did not fall and the walls were not thrown down. You see, Cyrus, who unified the Middle Persian Empire and then overwhelmed Babylon, was careful to spare the city. So the references, Jeremiah 50, 16, must be a later attack, right? Uh, which is stated by a guy named Feinberg, whom I assume is an, is, 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 uh, is an Edomite. It says, according to uh, Herodotus, um, Cyprus captured um, Babylon by diverting the Euphrates River into a trench. The Persians attacked Babylon so expediently that when the outer cities of the city, when the outer areas of the city had already been taken, those in the center did not realize that they were captured. One important factor to take into account is that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, radically repented before God. It is possible that the worst of what of the worst of what was prophesied did not happen because God mercifully responded to Nebuchadnezzar's repentance. It is at least possible that the humbling of Nebuchadnezzar culminating in his testimony in Daniel 4, 34 to 37, opened the door to the mercies of 539. And this wasn't, this, this, that is not what happened, right? The Mosai, you know, did not, you know, it's like they're trying to push the narrative that prophecies, um, the Mosai added, I mean, the Mosai kind of tweaked prophecies, you know, but that's not what happened. Now that's that's you know, that's just them reaching for the skies. Um, Continue says, uh, for it is obvious from God's generous response, even to even, and to even an Ahab, a Manasseh, or the city of Nineveh, that he meets a change of attitude more than halfway. And this is a different instance. Okay, this is um, him dealing with Israel, and this is him not dealing with Israel. So. I mean, that cannot be a direct comparison. It just seems um, it, 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 uh, it's not responsible of them to make that claim. You know, it says another important factor to take into account is that God is not done with his judgment upon Babylon. The city second, the city second most mentioned in the scriptures. Babylon was judged not far from Jeremiah's time, but even that judgment pointed towards a greater fulfillment in the last days, the fall, you, you, you see, you, you still have people, you know, making fun of this word. Like we just pull this, I, 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 you know, we just pull it out our ass and then we just started talking shit. Even these scholars know, they, they read, they really read it and they understand it. They know, you know, but they still make certain vague statements here and there because, you know, they, they, Either, you know, they are lies and they, they ain't trying to bring forth the, 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 the scriptures 
you know, or the Most High has not given them the full understanding of prophecies, which is which I, I believe is is the latter. Um, so it says the fall of Babylon prophesied by Jeremiah was partially fulfilled when the Medes and Persians conquered ancient, uh, ancient Babylon. Yet the connection between this fall of Babylon and Revelations 18 and 2, Babylon, the greatest fallen is fallen, shows that there is an ultimate fall of Babylon to come. And this ultimate fall, this Babylon, is America, man. The scripture tells you that the whore, right, which is also Babylon, is, set, is sat on the beast, right, which the beast is, is uh, um, NATO and EU, all right, which, and, and it shows you that, that, that statement that is sat on the beast, because really NATO and EU are like, they are um, posterities of America. America is, 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 America is what leads those nations. America is what pays all, most, most of the bills, most of the, uh, uh, um, the bills, you know, to strengthen the military. America is the one that puts its people you know, like I said, in the United Nations, UN, in positions of power, you know, that's why it sits. And, and it describes this Babylon, it describes nobody better than it does America, you know. So it's it's Babylon. And so knowing how it's Babylon, when it tells you that Babylon was destroyed by the arrows, and then we make, and we may tell you that the, the uh, we make the correlation um, of the arrows to be that of the nuclear warheads, people laugh. But this is actual truth that we're telling you. You see. Um, it has troubled some scholars that chapter 50 to 51 predict the violent destruction of Babylon, whereas its defeat by Cyrus in 539 BC took place without a battle and with no damage to the city, but with other predictive prophecies. If a fulfillment does not occur in one period, it is, uh, it is to be sought for in one, it is to be sought for in another and future one, right? In truth, this interpretive challenge is a strong testimony to the authenticity of Jeremiah's prophecy. Those critical scholars who reject the possibility of such foretelling of the future, right? A lot of people don't believe that Jeremiah makes no reference whatsoever to the future, to the times that we're living in. And who put these scriptures after Babylon's fall in, in 539 BC face an insurmountable problem. If these words were written after the event, they will surely correspond more accurately with the um, with the events themselves, you know. So these scholars know it. You know what we've been preaching all this while is truth. Babylon the Great, man, the one that makes the nation to drink of a wine. As a matter of fact, there's a whole um, definition. There, there's a whole um, concept. You know, uh, there's a whole there's a word for that whole concept, which is called soft power. And um, soft power is just um, let me get it right now. Okay, all right. Um, this thing is so it says in the late 1980s, political scientist Joseph Nye Jr. first described the concept of, of soft power, whereas um, hard power relies on inducements, right? Carrots and threats, sticks. Soft power gets others to to want the outcomes you want without a threat of coercion. And this is something that, that the Babylon the Great, which is America, has mastery in, okay? And, and they, they have mastery in what? In soft power. Soft power is determined by the attractiveness of a country's culture, domestic values, right? And, and this is what attracts people the most, their domestic values, their values. Do what thou wilt. And the substance of its foreign policies. Historically, the United States used um, its soft power to strengthen its cultural and moral appeal abroad. During the Cold War, America used the power of soft attraction 
to bolster its image as the leader of the free world and as a superior alternative to a Soviet um, alter, um, authoritarianism. Right, so in recent years, America's soft power has waned. In 2017, Trump's budget director, okay, this, this just keeps going into uh, a whole other one, but I hope you understand, you know, the things that America is known for. And the scripture says that this whore, okay, which is also Babylon, this virgin daughter of Babylon, is what? It makes the nations to drink of a wine, of a fornication. So if you, if so, you know, you ain't supposed to be like drunk with the philosophies of this place. You're supposed to flee from this place mentally, you know, don't be, don't, don't get caught up in, in this, in this harlot, man. Don't be caught up in this place. The Mosai is getting ready um, to show his power. Okay. He's tired of, uh, uh, you know, he has a specific point and when we reach that point, it is the point where he decides that nobody was going to talk shit no more. It's a point where he decides that he's going to staple his name as, as, uh, as, as the, he's going to staple himself as the one true power. At that point, you know, it's a point of a lot of death and killing and, and weeping. And then you, and you ought to make sure, keep your ground, man. The scripture tells us in Isaiah 57, um, chapter that, these wicked men, when they mock the Most High, it's just sort of like it's trying to understand why is it, why is it that they they are mocking? Who is it that they are mocking? They are the ones who said that they are the ones who have their heads on a chopping block. They are the ones who have no hope because they reject the one true power. They are the ones who are destined for the sword. They are the sheep made for the slaughter. You know, so you know we keep keep doing what we're doing. Um, this this word that we speak is true. And the most I will appeal to our joy very soon. So until the next one, I want to say shalom. Yahweh, Shemeshai, Barakathah.